Welcome to this sermon from Silver Lake Baptist Church. Our mission is to celebrate the greatness of God with all we are for the joy, hope, and renewal of our community. We are so glad you have chosen to listen to our message. We pray you will be blessed by your time with us today. Good morning. How's everyone doing? Good, good. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for just being so faithful and so good and just always, always there. You are, you are, you are always good and you're always faithful and you're always there. And we just thank you for that. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for, for, for the hope you bring and just for this exciting, exciting time we're coming into and we give you the praise for it holy spirit just speak through me this morning in jesus name amen, amen. so uh, had a fun fun week or so my uh granddaughter uh our youngest granddaughter one of 800 <laughs> actually we, we have eight grandkids so um pretty cool she's four she got to come up my sister and her boyfriend brought um my granddaughter Gracie up and so Gracie's awesome she's just a ball of energy but she used to call me Poopo <laughs> and so I was like you know because everyone was calling me Popo and she couldn't say Popo for some reason so I was like what do you want to be called grandpa I was like I'll be called Popo because I don't feel like a grandpa yet and so she started calling me Poopo and I was like you add one more O and I'm gonna be something else so I was like let's change this I was like how about you guys just call me goat which is kind of funny because we're talking about a, doing the, we're, we're a goat ministry where we send, you know, do goats, right? But not that kind of goat. Like, I don't want to be that kind of goat. Like, I'm thinking like Jerry Rice or Deion Sanders or, you know, the greatest of all time. Maybe like Jesus, right? He's a real goat, right? But um, so I was like, I telling them all, call me goat. No, we're going to call you Poopo. I'm like, no, call me goat. I was like, fine, just call me Grandpa, right? <laughs> but, but so Gracie, she's, a, she's like my sister, so it says, just call him Old Goat. And I was like, like well, I'll take what I can get, right? So, so I got one granddaughter named Charlie. She calls me Goat. And so I just tell everyone else they call me something else. They're like, well, see, Charlie's got it right. And then they'll start calling me Goat. So anyway, so you hear if one of my grandkids are ever around and they call me Goat, you will know what it means right <laughs> so so anyway we had fun got to hang with them actually um, got to take them to um, I got to go Linda had to work but I went with my sister and brother-in-law um, and we got to go to the Pendleton Roundup which was my my first time down there and that was like the most unique rodeo I've <coughs> ever seen and so the funnest part is is they have like a football field in the middle of a dirt racetrack that's surrounded by grandstands. And then the buck and shoots are on the outside of the dirt track. And so they literally have to buck, like they got like a dirt track slings to buck through and then they're on the grass. And you know how hard it is when you land on grass and you get bucked off, right? It was the funnest watching I've ever had in my life. I don't know what it is. It's, it hurts when I get bucked off, but I like seeing other people get bucked off. I think it's funny when they're limping and walking. I don't know why. And to make it even better, it's like, like all the contestants can sit on the sides of the buck and shoot out in the grass and watch. So the problem is, is the horses don't get a memo that, that you know what? We shouldn't run over people. And so these horses go bucking and they're bucking, they're doing their jobs and sometimes they go, you know, just flying through people and people are flying everywhere. And I was like, why didn't I go to this rodeo a long time ago? This is like the best. People are getting stomped on and kicked and run over. And I mean, it's like, this is why we go to rodeos, right? <laughs> and so it was just, it was just a blast. But anyway, I was just, um, just so thankful to have a good week. And, be able to spend that time. Actually, she's still in Oregon. She, they stayed in Oregon, but she'll be up tonight, and I'll get to spend another day with, with Gracie. And, um, and, of course, Linda is just spoiling her. So, anyway, we're just having a blast. And so thankful. They'll be back up tonight, and then we're going to have one more day to have some fun, and then, then we're going to cry when she goes back, <laughs> back down south. But um, all, all is well. I'm so thankful for that. As I was 
Oh, by the way, happy Happy New Year. L'shana <laughs> Tova, right? We're in the Happy New Year. You're like, Pastor James, did you hit your head? Were you like run over by a cow or a bull or something in Pendleton? No, no, I, I wasn't. It actually is the New Year. It's the, the head of the year. I always talk about the Jewish feast and festivals where we go through leading up to, to Ra, it's Rosh Hashanah. Right? We actually are in Rosh Hashanah right now, and it's two days. And so as we go into Rosh Hashanah, go leading up to Rosh Hashanah, you have, have the month of Elul. And Elul is a month where a lot of them read the Song of Solomon, where it's about love and about the king coming to the field and about restoring your relationship with God. And the, the rabbi, a lot of the rabbis say it's because God's mercy always precedes his judgment. Right? So God always gives us the opportunity to choose him and, and to turn around. And, and so we're going up, and then you got Rosh Hashanah. It's also known as the Feast of Trumpets, right? So what is a trumpet? Trumpets like, like jazz, man. <laughs> like, you see that? You guys like jazz? Like, 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 like never mind. OK. <laughs> right? It's like the jazz guys, right? No, it's a shofar, right? And I was talking about a shofar. Like, where did it come from? First time you see it? Really, where the where the rabbis and the people got the Jewish people got the ideal for the shofar was from when Abraham, the ram was provided in the thicket when he was sacrificing Isaac, right? And so you see, when the ram's horn's blown, I I, I think of freedom, I think of provision, I think of God being God and being faithful and being just and being holy and true. And now we got a whole festival. That's the start of the year. Now, now, Rosh Hashanah, it really means the head of the year, right? So we're coming into the head of the year. Now, that's the beginning of the year. And every month you have a, a, a head of the month, right? And so you have a new start, a Rosh Kodesh, a new start at head of the month, the head of the year. Every bit... I mean, every month's like a new beginning, like a new start. But in Jesus, we got a new beginning every second, every minute, every day, every morning. His mercies are new. And, and a lot of it, we get to celebrate for some reason. We all do it on a year. Wait, it's great to see you back. <laughs> yeah, right? God, you're all healed up and outrunning us all, right? And so, but um, what was I talking about? In a second. New year. new year, right? So we celebrate the new year, and it's always, well, I'm going to make a, what do you call that when you, like, resolution. resolution, right? I don't do those no more, so I don't even know what it's <laughs> called, right? I, my resolution is that I'll never make another resolution because <laughs> I'll, I'll break it the next day, right? And, and so but we, we have these new years and these resolutions, and it's always like we have this start, and we set this, you know what? We got to start every moment, every minute in Jesus. He, he's like, he's our hope. He's, he's the one that's for us, and we can just turn around and come back to him. We may be, maybe you've blown it. Maybe you were out there, and you've messed up, and you're like, man, I don't know. God can't take me back. I'm telling you, he's already with you. You can't outrun someone who's everywhere. Might as well just stop and let it hook back up with him and let him love on you. Come back. Don't keep running. It's a new start, new beginning. This is the time of hope. It's the year 5784, by the way. So you're like, man, Pastor James, you can't count. It's, a, it's like 2023, no, not on the Jewish calendar. It's 5784, and every number means something different. And I love going into that stuff, but, but as I was, I've been writing down some stuff, trying to figure out some, um, I'm going to start preaching a little bit on what, what I believe, what we believe as believers, because we write it down. You can go on our website and see what we believe, or you can go to the Baptist Faith and Message 2000, what they believe, or you can go on the internet and say, what do Christians believe? And they'll have this list of stuff. But what really do you believe? Right? Because what you believe is what you're going to live out. Right? Everything out of the abundance of the heart, right? The mouth speaks, right? Out of everything that we do, it comes from the inside out. And so 
it comes from our thoughts and our thinking and that thinking drops into our heart and then it drops into our actions. So what you believe is what you do, right? So it's important if you're struggling in an area, maybe the problem's not in your doing, the problem's in your believing. What do you believe about that and about that situation? So it's real important. What do I believe and why do I believe it and, and what does that mean to me? And so to me, it means a lot. One of the things we're going into the Jewish, Jewish feasts and festivals, and I know a lot of Christians believe this thing, that, that they have to celebrate those or they're not connected to God. Right? And then I know there's a lot of Christians that say, well, if they're celebrating those, they're not connected to God. Right? And so you got all these things hitting each other. Or there's these believers that think, you know what? Well, God's done with Israel. You know, he, the church replaces Israel and this and that. And that's not true at all, because if that was true, then God's a liar, right? And nothing in the book lines up or measures. And this is our standard, by the way, right? And so we're, we go into Ephesians, and Paul sat in here, and they've got these Ephesians, and they were Jewish people, and they were believers, right? And they had, they had met Jesus, and they, got, they were starting to get away from their, the traditions of Judaism, right? We have traditions in Christianity too. The, the traditions aren't necessarily bad, but if you put that tradition above what God's word is and about what God says, then that is replacing what God is wanting to do. And that's making that of importance. There's only one way that we're saved and it's be because of Jesus and his finished work. If you try to improve on that, you're just wasting your time. You're just spinning in circles. So it's real important. What do I believe about that? What is Jesus saying about that? So here they are. They're getting in. They, they've received Jesus. They've received the word. they received Paul. Here, Paul, man, this dude was a zealot, man. He studied, studied under one of the greatest rabbis in Jewish history. He knew the traditions. He knew the legalism. He knew all. He could dot every I. And cross every T. I usually say I can cross every I and dot every T, so I'm glad I got Actually, I said it anyway, didn't I? Right? That didn't work out. So here he is, zealous, right? Running from God. Not running God, running for God, he thought. But it wasn't really God he was running for, right? <coughs> Excuse me, man. Got a tickle in my throat. So here he is, running for God, and then God knocks him off his horse. A lot like they did in Pendleton. <laughs> right? It's pretty cool. So, anyway, um, could I get a glass of water or something? Could someone give me like a little bottle? <coughs> give me a second. Sorry about that. Tickle in my throat. That was fast. <laughs> I know all I need to do is if I need a drink of water is cough. <laughs> right? So here's Paul. He gets knocked off his high horse, right? So my, like I actually got this text last year. My son was at a rodeo, and his best friend was riding a bull, and he was in the back pull, pulling the rope for him. And, and um, my um, daughter-in-law sends me this video. She goes, you won't believe what happened here. So, so Cannon bucks out of the chute, rides a bull, marks a 90, Gets bucked off, but when he gets bucked off, he lands, and when he lands, he hits his head, and he gets knocked out on his feet, which means, like, he hops up, but he's, like, out of it. So the clown goes in to, to help him, and when the clown jumps in, the bull kicks him in the face. So the, the bull kicks him in the face, runs, runs down the road, and as the bull went out of the chute, my son got his finger caught and broke his finger. And so here, Cannon's knocked out on his feet, Jamie's broke his finger, the rodeo clown gets kicked in the face, and now the bull's running off. So the pickup man runs over to, and they're going to put a rope on the bull to keep him off of Cannon, and, and the bull reaches up and sticks his horn in between his shafts and the thing and jerks him off of his horse. And so you got... Cannon knocked out, Jamie trying to get his feet, the clown with his face bleeding, 
and the pickup man laying on the ground trying to scramble to get away from the bull and the horse running all around. <laughs> and they all lived. <laughs> right? But it made me think about Paul. Like, he's, he wasn't at a rodeo. He, he was probably on a pretty broke horse, right? And here he's going on his mission, and God knocks him off his horse, right? And so changes his entire mindset, changes everything about him. Like, he, he literally had to go and refocus and relearn almost everything, right? Not that what he learned was bad because it was a foundation of who he was, but there was more to it, and it was so simple, and it was so, so great, and Paul was so eloquent in stating that, right? So Paul sat here saying, okay, guys, look, it's not about what you do. You don't have to return back to the legalism of it, right? It's in freedom. If you want to celebrate the feasts and festivals, celebrate them, right? But if you don't celebrate the feasts and festivals, it does not mean that you're not saved and you're not a believer, right? What, what might be a conviction to one person might not be to someone else. Don't judge someone else because of what God's put on their heart. Maybe you don't like it. Don't judge the people who are keeping it. Just follow Jesus. There's only one reason that we're saved, and it's by, by grace through faith in Jesus, right? And so we love to celebrate different things. So celebrate. So here, here Paul's talking to him, and what was happening was the Gentiles were, were, um, were getting kind of ostracized by the, by the Jewish people because they're like, yeah, well, we're circumcised, but you're uncircumcised, right? And Paul's trying to tell him, well, you're uncir, you might not be circumcised, but you, it's not God that didn't circumcise you because when you met Jesus, guess what? You were circumcised what? In, in, in your heart. And he's like, like, don't get caught up on the flesh and on the outside and on the legalism and on that kind of stuff. Although there is some really, like, it's really good. Like, that shall not kill. Pretty good idea, right? That shall not steal. Like, you probably don't want to rob banks, right? It's not that it's bad that, that you're not doing that stuff. But that's not what leads us to salvation. That's, that's an effect of what we believe, right? And so here, the Jewish people are like, yeah. So they were, it's almost like they're saying, well, we're keeping this, and we're doing this. You're not, so we're better than you. And that's like far, far off from the gospel. So here Paul comes in, and he's like, look. Jews and Gentiles, they're united by the cross, right? Therefore, remember that formerly, you who are Gentiles by birth and called uncircumcised by those who call themselves a circumcision, and then he says this, that done in the body by the hands of men, remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel, and foreigners to the covenants of the promise. Without hope and without God in the world. But now, you know what? I love the word but. I, right? I love all God's buts. Right? I love God's buts and I cannot lie. There's a song. There's someone who write a song like that. Right? <laughs> Probably don't want to sing it in church because it sounds too bad, right? But now, when's now? Now. now. When's now? Now. Because when I said now a minute ago, it wasn't now. Right? But now it's now. Like I'd be telling you, someone, kick your horse, move that horse. I was like, like, what are you waiting on, Christmas? I kick it now. <laughs> like, well, I kicked it now. I was like, no, now was a second ago. Kick it now. You got to move forward. You got to get that horse forward. You're never going to get to that cow. Right now, now's now. That means that now is the time of his salvation. When's the time? Right now, right? It's, it's not, not difficult language. You don't need an interpreter to understand that, right? Now means now, right? And you're like, would you get on with it now? I heard you, I heard you guys. 
But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through all your works, through the keeping of the law, through your traditions. No. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who once were far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. Uh, time out on that for a minute. He's our peace. We're, we're like, well, what does that mean that he's our peace? Because like, we think of peace as like, well, we're not at war with Russia, so we're at peace. Well, kind of we're not. Kind of we probably are, right? Just different kinds of wars nowadays, right? We're, so, so, like, my Oklahoma Sooners aren't playing the Oregon Ducks right now, so me and Will are at peace, right? Until they play, and then it'll be war for a game, and then we'll be at peace again, right? So it's, but it's not, not, that kind of, not just that kind of peace. He is our peace. That is what he is. But that peace in Hebrew is a word shalom. When you think, when I, when I see Jesus, he's the peace that breaks down every wall. What does that mean? He's complete. Everything you ever need is in him. There's nothing missing. There's nothing broken. He's whole. He's everything you need, everything you ever needed, and everything you're going to need. You're going to find your hope, your peace in him. For he himself, he's saying, is our peace. He's everything that we will ever need or ever want. Everything we need, we find in him. And that's pretty, pretty good news, right? I love in Hebrews 1, it says this. In the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophet at many times and in various ways. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through him he made the universe that's the one that he's saying he himself is your peace that's the one that's pretty cool when you think about it for he himself is our peace who has made the two one and destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. Time out. That's not what, the, that's not what I, I, I always hear he, he took sin on the cross. He died for our sins. That's why he was on the cross. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. He took the stripes so that we can be healed, but it was just for sin that he died. Whoa, wait a second. Did you hear that? I didn't write this, by the way. I didn't make this up. Do you know who's saying this? Paul. Listen. By abol abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. Now, he didn't just do it on the cross either. When he came, do you know what? He kept it perfectly. Right? He was perfect. Of all, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, kept the law perfectly. All God, a man, kept the law perfectly. Went to the cross and abolished it, saying, I kept it. So now, guess what? In me, when you're in me, you don't have to worry about keeping the law. And here's where we get. It doesn't matter if you're Jewish or if you're Christian or if you're Muslim or if you're whatever. If you're trying to do something to earn your salvation, you're wasting your time. Straight up. I, I, can't, I, I don't know. You might as well go fishing without a fishing pole, which they, brought, they do back home. They call it noodling. I don't mean stay out of the water, sit on the bank. Hey, fish, hop up here, right? <laughs> That, that, that's about as, that's about as, like, noodling. Who's, who even does that? Like, I went a few times, and I was like, I ain't sticking my hand down there. Like, like, like you know we got snakes, right? Like, why would you stick your hand in a fish's mouth, right? I mean, they swallowed Jonah by you. I mean, they're, 
bad. Fish are scary, and they don't even taste good, you know? It tastes like mud down there, right? So where I grew up, so where in the world am I even at? Right? So you're wasting your time, right? You're just wasting your time. You're just on a, on a you're just spinning in circles because it is not going to accomplish your salvation. And you're going to get tired, and it's going to feel hopeless. But when we see Jesus, and when we accept Jesus, and we believe that his finished work made the difference, something happens inside of us, and we're like, you know what? I'm, it's no longer about me. I'm crucified with him. Therefore, I don't live, but it's who? Christ. It's Christ that lives where? In me. He lives in me. And guess what? If, if he's in me, and, I, and then the Bible says this, that I'm seated in him. Do you know what that means? I'm one with him. There's no separation. He's in me, and I'm in him. He's my representative in heaven, and we're his representation here on earth, right? And so now when we live, oh, it's Christ in me. Right? It's in him we live, and we move, and we have our being, and it's in him we believe, and it's in him as the Holy Spirit guides us and leads us, and then it's in, in and through him that we can only love. We can love like a person, but when we love from our spirit, like you can love from your flat, flesh, which really isn't real love, not the love, our flesh is going to die. And everything with the flesh is going to die. But when it comes from the inside out, upside down, then guess what happens? That's when we see real change. It's not from keeping some. Now, I love Rosh Hashanah, and I love Passover. I love the Passover seders. I love, all, I love to celebrate it. But I don't celebrate it to be saved. There are certain things I do because I am saved. Like being baptized. You, you're not saved because... You, when you get baptized, you're say, you get baptized because you are saved, right? I don't do communion to get saved. I do communion to remind me that I am saved, right? When you, when you realize that there's an order and there's a way that God sets all this up, then you quit trying to put, like you can't put the cart before the horse. I mean, someone could probably rig something up nowadays that would. But you, you ain't going nowhere. And my grandpa always say, boy, you got the cart before the horse. I'm like, I ain't got a cart. The horse are in the pasture. What's he talking about? Right? That's what you got. You got the cart before the horse. It's okay. Stick the horse in, and then you can go with the cart anywhere you want, and you're not doing the, the you can do the, the right thing for the wrong reason. Right? And it's about a living relationship with a living God that loves you so much that he sent his son, his only son, the son whom he loves, to die for you so that you can have life and have life more abundantly. And so he's saying he's the one, he's like abol by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. That doesn't mean that they were going around killing people or stealing or or that, what it means is we're focused on him and it's kept in him. We're not doing that so we can go to heaven. We're doing that because that's not who we are. Right? His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two Thus making peace, now there's that word peace, it's a different peace, that is a peace like me and Will have right now until they have to play football, <laughs> right? And in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross by which he put to death their hostility, he came and preached peace to you who were far away in peace to those who were near. He's saying, look, now this is a different kind of peace. This is different than the shalom. This is a peace that like, hey, I'm not at war with you. 
God's like, I'm not mad with you, for God was so mad at the world that he gave his son so you would repent. It's almost like sometimes we have the gospel like that. Oh, God was so mad, he hated the world so much that he had to send Jesus to die for the world, so he must have hated Jesus too, because I mean, come to them, he's a loving father. Like, excuse me, I want nothing to do with that dude. For, but for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He made peace before we did. Jesus hung on the cross. They hung him on the cross. He's, he's like, I got the white flag, boys. I'm here for peace. And they're like, oh yeah, watch this. We're going to hang you on a cross. And you know what he did then? He's like, well, sorry suckers. You're trying to kill me. You killed me. I'm going to wipe you out. Now I'm mad. No, not at all. It was his plan. His plan was and is for Peace. God is not mad at you. That's good news. Right? For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. Uh, here, every, every Jewish person knows the Shema because the Shema is on the, every Jewish household. It's like in a Mezuzah, and, and it's in Deuteronomy, and, it, and it's, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is God. He is one. Love him with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. But Hear, O Israel, the Lord, Yahweh, I am that I am, is Elohim. Elohim is Echad, is, is one. One God, three people, and now, you know what Jesus is saying is, is we're in Jesus and he's in us and God, Jesus and the Father are one and the Holy Spirit is one. Guess what? You can't be one with Jesus and not be one with the Father and the Holy Spirit because they're all one. Right? It's not like you get in one club and you have to exclude it from the other. Right? And it's not what he's saying. It's not like you're Jewish and then you're Christian and then you're two different people but you're serving one God. No. We become one in Christ Jesus, Jew and Gentile, one new man created in the image and the likeness of Jesus himself. And we have access to him, one spirit. We're not chasing, they ain't chasing one God, we're chasing the other. One God, one spirit. Cons consequently, I don't know if I like that word, because I can barely say it. <laughs> Consequently, you are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people and members of God's household. Do you know what he's saying? Hey, hey, you, you, might not, you might be a Gentile, but guess what? You're not separate from God's household. You are part of God's family, part of God's household. Now, that doesn't mean that Israel doesn't have God's promises. Right? For a Jewish person, that, that those, they, they take it very seriously. Right? But you are not excluded if you are a Gentile. That's what he's saying. And that's, that's pretty good news. Consequently, you are no longer foreigners or aliens, but fellow citizens of with God's people and members of God's household, built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you two are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. And there's like, man... There's no separation between you and God. You're one with him. He loves you. He's for you. He's not mad at you. He's at peace with you. He's at peace with you, and he is your peace. It's good news. Enjoy the Jewish holidays. Celebrate the Jewish ho holidays. Celebrate 
your traditions, but don't mistake your traditions for the way you're saved. There's only one way, and it's through Jesus himself. Amen? So, Father, we thank you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your peace. We just give you the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for listening. If you'd like to learn more about us, check out our website at www.silverlakebaptist.org.